So with this build, I was kind of pressed for time. And let me tell you why. About three weeks before my son's first birthday, my wife comes to me and tells me she wants a sideboard table for our back patio before the party. So I'm like, okay, challenge accepted and immediately got to work. Now with still working a full-time job during the week, that only leaves me with about two hours every afternoon and weekends to be able to get this complete in only three weeks. And you may be thinking to yourself, huh, oh, that's easy. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But shortly after that mindset changed and you'll see why. So I wanted this cabinet to have a waterfall edge and to be able to do that I needed to glue up my panel all in one piece which meant I needed to joint eight foot boards and my planer beds aren't that long so I just took care of it with the track saw and then take it over to the table saw and rip it to final width and then I could start gluing it up. Once all the panels were out of the clamps and cleaned up, I started breaking them down into the pieces that will become the cabinet. The bottom, the two sides, the top, and the two middle dividers. I made sure to take my time with this part, because like I said, I wanted that waterfall look, which would give it that beautiful, continuous grain look around the edge of the cabinet. And one wrong cut could ruin it all. And due to the cabinet being so large, I was only gonna be able to do this on one corner. So I chose the top left, the top left will be seen the most, so it just makes sense. Now you may be wondering why I cut one of the larger panels, which is going to be the top, into three pieces. Well, you'll see that shortly. Over at the table saw, all of the parts are cut to final width. Then I can start working on that front edge detail. And I'm going with a 45 degree chamfer on the front edge because it's a design I've used and it's the one my wife liked and wanted me to use. Now I could start cutting the joinery for the center dividers and to attach the center dividers I'm going to be using stop dados and this is where things started to go wrong. Kind of a shame to say it but I messed up a lot on this build. But it was a personal project so it gave me the opportunity to practice fixing these mistakes to make myself a better woodworker and I think it did that. Does it look the best? No. Should I have made a new piece? Probably. Did it still come out all right? I think so. Did my wife notice? Nope. That's all that matters to me. So when I was laying out my lines for the dado, somehow I measured on the wrong side of the line, which resulted in the dado being in the wrong spot. Now to fix this, I just took one of the cutoffs from the panels that I cut up earlier and took it over to the table saw and ripped a three quarter inch piece, which is the same size as the dado. Then square off the corners of the dado slot with a chisel, get it glued in place, wait for it to dry, clean it up, and try again. The other dado slot ended up being a little bit off, so I went ahead and just filled it. The next day I come back out and flush cut the ends, and then use a hand plane to get the majority of it cleaned up. Now it was time for attempt number two for the layout of the dados. And this time I ended up clamping the top panels. And then using a marking knife, I can mark an accurate line. Then I can clamp my straight edge in place and give it another go. Now that the dado was in the right spot, it was a little bit tight, so I ended up just adding a little piece of blue tape to my straight edge and taking another pass, and that was just enough to make it a perfect fit. After cleaning up the rounded corners left by the router bit, I could start notching out the dividers. And for this, I just used a couple hand saws, quick and easy. And 
Now that that's done, it was almost time to start gluing up the cabinet. But before doing so, I needed to cut a rabbit on all of my pieces so that I could fit the back panel at the end. And adding some dominoes to help keep things aligned during the glue up. Before gluing up a box, I always like to sand the inside of the pieces because it's a lot easier to do it now than it is once it's glued up. And then my two bosses stopped by. I asked him if he wanted to help, but he was not having that. So I was stuck doing it by myself, but I don't mind. For the glue up, I decided to do this in different sections. So I started out by attaching the divider to the top piece, which made an L shape, and I did that for the left and the right side. Once those were dry, I took the bottom panel and the side panel and attached those. And then I could pop in the L shape piece and throw some clamps on it. And the other side is done the exact same way. Once it was out of the clamps, I went to go test the fit for the top middle piece. And I realized that I forgot to put the horizontal rails. So I used two different joinery methods to attach the front and the back rails. For the front, I'd use the domino and did a through mortise. Then made some oak dominoes on the router table. I actually got this idea from Jason Bent over at Bent's Woodworking. He has a great video showing you how to make hardwood dominoes, and I'll actually leave a link to that video in the description below, in case you want to go check it out. Then I just used this little strip to kind of hinge open the top of the cabinet so that I could fit the horizontal stretcher in place and slip the dominoes through. Remove the little strip, and then get them glued in. And this actually worked really well. And for the back, I just notched out the dividers and created a cross lap. And once everything was fitting nice and tight, I needed to add the rabbit to this so that the back panel would have something to attach to. So I jumped over to the table saw, added that rabbit really quick, and then got the back stretcher glued in. I had just binge watched the new season of Cobra Kai and felt like this was necessary. After the horizontal rails were in place, I moved on to installing the hinges for the middle section of the top. Now I can start working on the drawer boxes. So I'll start out by ripping some boards to the correct width and then setting the blade to be able to cut the dado for the bottom panel. And this is where I made mistake number three. So after making that first pass, I realized that that cut was a little bit too deep. And after looking at it, I used the wrong setup block. Instead of using a quarter inch setup block, I mistakenly used a 3 8 So I just readjusted the blade height and continued on. I'll start out by cutting only the drawer sides and then taking those over to the piece so that I can get an accurate measurement for the drawer width. Now 
Then I can get the drawer bottoms cut. Before assembling the drawer boxes, I always like to sand all the internal pieces because it's a lot easier to do now than after the drawer box is assembled. For now, I'm only going to be using glue and clamps to assemble the drawer boxes, and I'll come back later and we'll add some more strength to these. Now to add more strength, since I had more of the oak dominoes left over from the horizontal rails, I figured I would do through dominoes to add to the aesthetic look of the drawer boxes. To install the drawer slides, I just used a couple pieces of scrap plywood to ensure that all the drawer slides would be at the same height. And then for the hardware that would attach to the drawer box itself, I just put it in the center of the drawer box. And this is why the middle section of the top has hinges. So the cabinet's actually gonna house this ice chest. And to be able to do so, I needed to install a shelf that the ice chest could sit on. So I measured how big the panel needed to be, took it over to the table saw, got it cut to length, And then I realized that I cut it too short somehow. Since I was running low on time and I didn't have any more 3 quarter inch material on hand, I decided to attempt to reconnect these two pieces using dominoes. And while doing this, the end piece actually ended up splitting in half. So I added a little bit of glue to it, clamped it together, and then clamped the rest of the panel together. Once it was dry, I attempted to cut it to length again, and I still cut through the dominoes. But that wasn't that big a deal. It was a shelf and these would never be seen. So if you don't tell anybody, I won't. To support this shelf, I had originally planned to use shelf pins, but after drilling the first hole for the shelf pin, I decided that I didn't really like this. So I ended up making two rails that would support this shelf and I would have to go back later and fix the shelf pin hole that I drilled. Then I come back with an oversized drill bit to allow for wood movement. And then I should have done this at first, but I used a Forstner bit to countersink and make a flat bottom hole.
To fix the shelf pin hole, I needed an oak dowel, the exact size of the shelf pin hole that I drilled. And to do this, I'm using a process that I've seen Izzy Swan do. He has a great video showing how to set this up, so if you need to make your own, definitely go check that video out. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. After that, I decided to shift gears a bit and start working on the base. And for it, I'm using eight quarter material. I start out by laying out the shape for the feet. And then going over to the miter saw and cutting that first angle and cutting everything to length. Then I can lay out and cut all the joinery for the base. When it came to clamping the base, I decided to go with a process that I hadn't tried before but I had seen other people use. So basically you can just super glue some scrap pieces of plywood to your piece as clamping calls and then when you're done you can knock them off and sand away the bits of plywood that are left. So I decided to give that a try. The 3 quarter inch piece of plywood didn't seem to be enough to be able to attach the clamps to so I just used the brad nailer and attached another piece on top of it to give it a larger clamping surface. Once the pieces were out of the clamps, I could knock off the pieces of the plywood, then clean them up with the sander, and this actually seemed to work pretty well. I will probably use it again. And then back at the miter saw, I can cut that second angle on the feet. Once those were cut, I needed to transfer that angle to these end pieces. And then take them over to the table saw and cut it. And mark the placement for the domino. And once all of those were cut, I could glue up the remainder of the base. Once the base was dry, I used a round over bit to round over all the sharp edges. And then get the corners cleaned up with a sanding block. Using a Forstner bit, I countersunk the holes for the screws that will be used to attach the base to the cabinet. Then using a drill guide to drill the smaller holes that will go all the way through. On to attaching the base, I get the cabinet flipped over so that I can transfer the screw locations to the cabinet and pre-drill the holes.
Once I got back to working on the cabinet, I realized that the lid had developed a bit of a bow, so I needed to come up with a way to fix this. And I've used C-Channel in the past to keep tabletops flat, but this lid was a little bit too thin for C-Channel, so I decided to experiment with something a little different. So my plan was to inlay this piece of flat bar into both ends of the top. And I started by experimenting on a piece of scrap just to get a proof of concept. And I was pretty happy with these results, so I moved on to doing this to the lid. And that's when the set through for the pattern bit decided to back out. So I'll just leave this for now, but I'm actually going to come back and patch this later. Once I had it fit, I could cut the flat bar to length. Then lay out the holes, get them drilled, so that I can attach it. Since I am going to be attaching this with screws going directly into the end grain, I pre-drilled the holes to help eliminate the chances of it splitting. And for finish, I'm just bluing the steel to give it an aged antique look. Once that was done, I moved on to attaching the drawer faces and the doors that I made in my last video. If you didn't see that, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. And somehow I lost the footage on installing the drawer faces and the door hardware. So we're just going to skip forward to installing the doors. I just use a deck of playing cards as shims so that I can get a consistent reveal on all of the doors. And then I can mark where I need to drill the holes for the hinges. Get those pre-drilled and add the screws. And then install the doors. Now I needed to figure out something to act as a stop for the doors. For the two center doors, I just added this little block of wood. And for the outer doors, I just glued on a smaller block to act as a door catch. With this build getting close to what I thought was the end, I could attach the back panel. So I made a couple marks to cut it to length, and then from the inside I marked the horizontal rail that I actually needed to notch around. Back at the workbench, I cut it to length with the track saw. Then used the jigsaw to cut the notch around the horizontal rail. With the back panel clamped in place, I remembered that I still needed to cut the two shelves for the outer parts of the cabinet, so I cut those and got them put in place, and then I could disassemble the entire cabinet to get ready for finish. I cleaned up the corners of the chamfer with a chisel and a sanding block to remove any saw marks, then ran over the entire outside of the cabinet with the sander and started applying finish. After I got the finish on and everything put back together, I realized that I didn't have any pulls and the party was only two days out so I didn't have time to order any, so I had to make them myself. I went and picked up some half inch square tubing and got to work.
for finish. I just blued the steel just like I did for the flat bar on the lid. Then I can drill the holes for the poles. And when I was making these, I must have gotten some welding slag into the threads. So I just used a tap to clean those out and got them attached. And with it being the morning of the party with only hours to spare, I could get the back installed and I can call this build done. Whew. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.